Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2 on the most powerful tablet that I currently have in my possession as of making this video. Now recently I did a very similar video to this using the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, but what we have here is a bit more powerful, coming in with the Snapdragon 870, and this just happens to be the new Xiaomi Pad Pro 5. Now, if you're interested in checking out the overall performance of this tablet and some other emulators running on it, I've done a full review video, but at the time of making that review, we didn't have Ether SX2, and I really wanted to test this out. Plus, I had a few viewers asking about it. When it comes down to the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, it's still a great tablet, and it's my personal favorite tablet right now but it has the Snapdragon 865 Plus. And I will admit that the 870 and 865 Plus are very similar, but I do notice a jump in performance when I move over to this tablet here. So with this, we've got the Snapdragon 870. We've also got six gigabytes of RAM and a beautiful 11 inch IPS 2560 by 1600 120 Hertz display. This could have easily turned out to be my favorite tablet of 2021, but they did leave one thing out, and that's display over USB Type-C. Unfortunately, we cannot do HDMI over USB Type-C on this tablet, and for me, that's a big letdown. And that's one of the main reasons I'm a huge fan of the Galaxy Tab S line. And we do have rumors that the new Tab S8 will be releasing in 2022, and that thing's going to be an absolute monster when it comes to Android gaming and emulation. As soon as I can get my hands on one, I will be doing a ton of videos, but for this one here, we're using the Xiaomi Pad Pro 5. I've also got the IPEGA 9083 telescopic controller connected. And when it comes down to it, the 9083 isn't a horrible controller, but it's not top of the line. It's really the only one that'll fit these larger tablets, and that's one of the main reasons I use it. So with that out of the way, let's see how this tablet performs with the new Ether SX2 PS2 emulator for Android. So first on the list, we have Automotalista, one of my favorite racing games of all time, and my favorite version of it was on GameCube, but here it is running with the new Ether SX2 PS2 emulator for Android at 3x resolution with the Vulcan back in. I did try OpenGL, and at 3x I did have a few hiccups, but Vulcan is smooth as butter on this Snapdragon 870 tablet. Here's Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, and with this one I was also able to leave it at 3x resolution. And uh, you know, I didn't try OpenGL with this because as soon as I started it up with Vulkan, it was running this well. We're at 60 FPS, and I know it's a bit hard to see, but I'll try to move in a bit closer in a little bit with some other games. Spider-Man, friend or foe, Vulcan back in, 3x resolution, again, this one's performing really well on the Snapdragon 870. I just kind of threw this in here because, you know, back in the day, I really did enjoy this game. With the easier to emulate games like Crash, Wrath of Cortex, and even Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I was able to take this up to 5x resolution with the Vulcan back in. And we actually do have enough screen resolution here for it to make a difference. It does look really, really good upscaled this far. Here's Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and I had a good feeling we'd be able to take it up to 5x. We could probably go a bit higher with this, after all it's just a 2D game that was ported to a lot of different systems. But I personally really don't notice much of a difference with these 2D fighting games going from let's say 2x up to 5. It kinda looks the same to me. I can definitely tell going from 1x to 2, but uh, you know, going this far up doesn't make much of a difference, at least to my eye. So with Sly Cooper, I did have to take this down to 1x. I was really hoping that we could at least go to 2 with it, and it does perform much better, at least on this tablet here with the Vulcan back end. But I did notice a few issues here and there, and it really comes down to, you know, emulator development. As of making this video, the emulator's still in open beta, so there's still a lot of work that's going to be done with it. But some textures and even objects are missing completely with that Vulcan back end. When I drop down here, you'll see those walls disappear.
Gran Turismo 4 3X OpenGL. I tried Vulcan with this, and that 3X, I was getting a lot of stutters. It was actually only running at about 55 FPS, but as soon as I swapped back over to OpenGL, we got full speed with this at 3X resolution, and it's just so cool to see this game running on an Android tablet. Tekken 5 has always been a relatively easier game to emulate with most PS2 emulators, be it, uh, you know, even on Android or x86, and with this here, I knew we'd have great performance. Vulcan back in, 3x, running at full speed. In my experience, most of these Ratchet & Clank games are a bit hit or miss with the emulator being in beta phase right now, even on the Snapdragon 888. Here's Going Commando at 2x with the Vulcan back in, and at first I was really excited because we were at full speed, but once we go down a few of these halls, there's lots of particles on screen, it does drop down. I really do think that we'll get full speed through these games at 2x as soon as, you know, more development goes on with this awesome emulator. I also tested another Ratchet & Clank game, and with this, I just went down to 1x to see if I could alleviate any of those, you know, dips, and it's still kind of hit or miss, whether I'm at 1x or 2x with this game. Need for Speed Underground 2 is pretty much unplayable on everything that I've tested so far. I could be at 1x resolution, I could use the Vulcan backend, or OpenGL. I've also tested this on my most powerful Snapdragon 888 device, and I'm still getting really bad performance, but when it comes to the first Underground game, we can do this at 2x with the Vulcan backend, or even OpenGL, and it runs great. Here we have one of my favorite fighting games. Uh, in my opinion, this is kind of a remake of the original on PlayStation 1, but it does look really good here, and we're at 3x with this, Vulcan back in, running super smooth. And finally, at least for this video, God of War 2, and with this one I'm actually using the US version of the game itself, so we can run at 60, but I would definitely prefer using the European version. It's only going to go to 50, but it does run a lot better on this device. So far, the Xiaomi Pad Pro 5 has been the best performing Android tablet I've been able to test out with Ether SX2, and it really comes down to this thing having that Snapdragon 870. And there are a few other tablets on the market right now with the 870. I know for sure that Lenovo makes one, but I'm super excited about the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 line. Rumor has it that the S8 will have the Snapdragon 888, which is a nice upgrade over the 870, but the S8 Ultra is going to be packing the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And when it comes to GPU performance on the new Gen 1, it is absolutely insane. Just in Antutu alone, it's scoring about a million points, which is ridiculous when it comes to these Android devices. So with that, we should see a really, really big uptick in performance. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in just checking out my full review on the Xiaomi Pad Pro 5 with native Android gaming and some other emulators running, I will leave a link for that in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.